Okay folks, this is part five in the Mondeo gearbox out jobby to change the DMF. Keep watching. Right, well while this subframe was stripped down and I've now got all the parts to rebuild it, uh, let's give it a bit of a clean up. This is really the only opportunity I'm gonna to have to do this, so while it's off the car, you might as well do this. I'm gonna take off the wishbones, the lower wishbones, I'm gonna replace them. I'm also gonna take off the anti-roll bar and put the new rubbers in that, so that's what we're gonna do now. And we'll also just give it a bit of a spruce up and a paint up, get rid of all the grease that's been sitting around on it for the past sort of decade, so to speak. So let's have a look at that and do that now. Okay, so there we go. So I've talked up all of the uh, bolts for the steering arm and the anti-roll bar. So on the lower arm, you've got the front and the rear bolts, obviously, that uh, uh, need tightening up. And they also have to have lock tight put on them as well, thread lock. So I've done that as well. And the front ones, are, I think it's 59 foot-pounds uh, tightened up. And then you tighten them after you've got 59 foot-pounds. Take the uh, torque wrench around to 60 degrees or thereabouts. And the lower arm rear bushes is 66 foot pounds. And also do the 60 degree tighten up once you reach that as well. And the clamp bolts that hold on the anti-roll bar are 35 foot pounds. So they've all been done. And uh, let's now take a, just a little look at the, what we've actually done there. Right, there she is. And those of you who are on my Facebook Retro Restore group would have seen me post a picture of this yesterday. I've actually done this yesterday. So that's all back on now and ready to go with all the brand new bushes on. So here's the gearbox, and I've actually given this a bit of a clean off. It may not look clean, but <laughs> this was literally caked. You couldn't see none of this gold plating on here. So what I've got to do now is actually to remove the drive shaft oil seals, which are sitting in here. And that involves prising these old ones out. This is them sitting here. Prising the old ones out of a big lever or screwdriver and just popping the new ones in. So I'm gonna actually do that now. Right, okay then, that's the uh, thrust bearing in and the old ones taken out as you can see. The uh, drive shaft oil seals were a bit of a nuisance to lever out and lucky enough I had that crowbar and that really was the only tool. I've never done that with a screwdriver, you know, they tell you to do it with a suitable lever in the manual but uh, as you can see the effort I had to put behind it in the uh, time lapse video 
we had to give it quite a bit of oomph. Anyway, that was that. So this is the old um, assembly here, as you can see. Now, that thrust bearing should spin lovely and freely. That I don't know whether you can see or not. Here's the old thrust bearing. Can you see how graunchy that is? And all that's in there is all that dust was caught up or that come off of the, uh, the disintegration of either the flywheel or the clutch. And that's really tight, so it wouldn't have been long before that actually give up. So yeah, good idea to change all these parts as you're stripping this down. And the dust actually that was on this, this should have really just withdrawn pretty easily. But all the dust had actually congealed on the inside. That's why I had to give it a little bit of a squirt with some penetration spray just to ease that up and then give it a tap from behind to get this out. These should fall out, I would have thought normally, but uh, there you go, there's that. Right, I managed to buy one of the new bolts for the back of the subframe. I haven't done that job yet. We're gonna have to do that pretty shortly, obviously. The bolt itself was uh, three pounds something from Ford dealers, so I've got a brand new one of those. I'm gonna try and retain the castellated nut that sits in the actual cross member, but that means cutting a hole in the floor, withdrawing that left out bolt and then unwinding it and then trying to preserve that because they didn't sell me the nut that goes with it. They said they can't, they don't sell them. Anyway, that's Ford for you, so I don't know what thread that was and they didn't, they didn't seem to know either. When this is actually installed on the car, this sticks out this way and the bleed nipple sort of sticks up in the air. Well, on that one, the bleed nipple also comes round as well, so both pipes are actually coming round this way. There was no way I could have changed this. I've had a look, these are only cheap plastic. Uh, things and you couldn't unscrew that one and this is part of the right kit so it must be just a modification it just means this one comes around there and you bleed in that way instead of going straight down on top i'll be bleeding it anyway with everything out so you'll have full access anyway so that shouldn't be a problem so that's fitted now and now what we're going to do i'm going to start to actually just remove the clutch now and take the uh, flywheel off and then we'll have a little recap and look at where we are because we're now at the stage of putting stuff back together so i'm just going to buzz that clutch off for now and then i'll show you when, when we take it off what it looks like right okay then the dual mass flywheel's off the clutch is off and now this is the uh, crankshaft oil seal which as i've got it stripped down i did buy a new one as you probably know and that's what i'm going to fit now so these are held on by eight mil bolts as you can see all around the perimeter there are they 8mm? No, they're not 8mm. Right, for some reason my 8mm don't fit it. So this is a 5 sixteenths. And this does fit it, so whether they've changed the size <laughs> of the bolts just to make life awkward, I don't know, but my 8mm slid on that first one, so there you go. So this is a 5 sixteenths spanner. And so far, that flywheel and dual mass flywheel that I've actually replaced or taken off, there looks to be very little wear on that clutch whatsoever. And it is a replacement part because it is a luck one as well, L-U-K, same as the one I'm actually fitting. But as I say, the, the dual mass flywheel is sort of totally knackered. Oh God. Now, you ain't gonna believe this, but one of these bolts, is actually rounded off and it looks like it's been off before or someone's had a go at doing it before these two here look like they've been had a go off before so I've got to try and get that one out there's one there which is making my life difficult yet again and I'm going to try that one in a minute so let's get all the rest of these out first be careful that you don't breathe in this dust very very toxic so that's just one to be aware of. Nope. Two of these have been rounded off previously. <laughs> oh God. Oh, let's try something else. Now I suppose the only thing in my favour is they're not they're only small bolts and they're not very tight. So I'm hoping if you've got a good set of mole grips, I'm hoping to be able to really clamp these on tight and perhaps crack it. Oh, let's see how we go here. See how we go here. No, it's not going to work. Nope. Oh, God, I don't 
don't want to have to grind them off. Right, I got this one undone. How I achieved that was basically hammering on the nut with the club hammer until it just sort of spread a little bit. And that meant that the socket wouldn't go on. And then all I'd done was get the socket, put it over the nut, and then hammer that on with a club hammer. And that produced just enough resistance for me to be able to undo it. Now there's another thing to realise now. I started to prise this off, and as you can see, oil's coming out because we've got the engine tipped down. And don't forget, that is the crankshaft oil seal, so we're going to lose some oil there as well. I've got a container underneath it anyway, so that's that one out. I was just on the verge of cutting it out, but I thought I'd just try that. So, again, another little tip there, like this one up here. Just tap it, tap the nut, not hard, and you'll find that will start to flatten off and it's just starting to flatten off now the socket still goes on there at the moment so I want it a bit tighter than that so try that right the socket just won't go on there now as you can see it's spinning and it won't go on so that's when we take our socket it's a bit awkward this one it's a lot higher up and get it in place I would show you the awkward one wouldn't I <laughs> you're not going to be able to see this but you know what I'm doing anyway right here we go see it's got a little start and just hammer it until it's on I don't know whether this is going to do it you're seeing this one live now so put it on there and if, if it's all well good there we go, done it. Whew, how about that? Silly little tricks like that. Just got me out of trouble. Otherwise, I would have had to get the cutter out, cut the head off, maybe destroyed it. And I'm going to have to get myself two new bolts. I don't really want to have to put them back in anyway. So, right, that's that off now. If we just start prising this off, as I say, I'm expecting the oil to pour out of here. There we go, look. Lucky enough, I've got a container here. Again, I've done an oil change on this not so long back, if you remember. Look how black that oil is, look. I've got a brake clean spray, which I'm going to clean all this anyway with all this in here, because you don't want no, obviously no lubricants floating about when you've changed these things over. But I would say... Is that an original? I don't know. No, yeah, look, that's never been changed, no. But someone may have had to have a go at changing it. Rounded two nuts off when they done the clutch. Because this is a genuine Ford one. It's got Ford written on it, so... Seeing as they've put a pattern clutch in it, there's a good chance they might have wanted to change the oil seal and all, but they come up against that problem there. Noticeably, it was one of the first ones you would have undone initially there, and then they probably tried another one. Rounded another one on. As I say, I thought they was eight mils. They're not eight mils. 5 16th was the size that went on there, so that could have been the problem. Some, someone could have rounded it off with an 8mm, so that's that one off. Well, I'm going to let that run off and dry off for a minute before I clean all this lot up, and then we'll reinstall the uh, the the new uh, crankshaft oil seal. So, again, job worth doing, so we're doing it. Now, one thing I've done is to go around all these ways here, I'm just doing these last few now and getting rid of all this old dust that is sitting in these channels here now bearing in mind I said that that clutch looks like a pretty new clutch in there and all this waste here obviously hasn't come off of that clutch so what I suspect has probably happened as this may have had two, maybe a couple of clutches before this in its lifetime, this is obviously all the old clutch dust and whatever that has never been cleaned out. And as a result of that, the last clutch which it looks like it's had pretty recently has disintegrated because of the ingress of all this dust and caused the dual mass flywheel to actually prematurely wear 
So this is probably the cause of that jaw mass flywheel going. Bearing in mind, if you remember rightly, what drew me to the attention that this was a possible problem was that the starter motor started having problems. And when we took the starter motor out initially in one of my other videos, the starter motor was actually full of this dust. So using a bit of common sense, it seems like that by not clearing all these channels and ways out here, you're basically leaving all this dust in there, which has got into other parts of the engine with regards to the flywheel, the starter motor, and also in the thrust bearing for the clutch. As you saw, that was also in that as well. And also, if once I've examined the, the actual dual mass flywheel, there's loads of that dust in there as well. Now, them parts have obviously worn as a result of the ingress of this dust, so this has probably never been done, and that's what's probably caused the premature aging of the dual mass flywheel. You've got to watch that little magnet up here, look, for the um, pickup. And as I said to you once, once again, I've got a, a mask on here at the moment, and that's probably why I'm sounding a bit muffled. But don't let, don't ever breathe this dust in because it's highly toxic. If that gets in your lungs, you're in trouble. See that magnetic pickup there? Look, I've got to clean that off as well. There's all iron filings stuck on that. So before we do that, I'll uh, clean that off as well. And probably the best way to clean this out is with a proprietary brake brake cleaner. So just literally going all these ways. See, and this is probably something that never gets done when you take your car into one of these quick clutch places or even a garage maybe so definitely worthwhile spending doing this because I don't want to have to strip this down again in the future and as I say it's possibly using a bit of common sense it looks like this has been the problem that's caused our other problem and to cause this clutch prematurely to um, go because looking at that clutch plate which I'll show you in a minute there is absolutely no wear on it whatsoever and all this dust hasn't come from that as you can imagine so just doing the job properly or being aware of what possibly caused the problem I mean I could have bolted this clutch back in and it could have gone again in probably a few months time and I've, I've heard of people say that they fitted a new clutch and uh, few months later or 10,000 miles later the clutch has gone again well it could have been for this reason so just err on the side of caution and do this little bit of preventative maintenance and hopefully stop all your hard work in stripping this out from happening again go that's on there we are that's on right and I'm just going to replace these bolts